Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about the non-mythics, the top eight most expensive non-mythics. I have said this many times, if you want to determine if you want to get a box or not, you should not be looking at the mythics or the mythic of mythics, the masterpieces. These are not realistic expectations because you at most will get anywhere between two to four mythics. I think I, I've seen a five mythic box one time but you're not gonna get all the valuable ones, right? So even if you have a five in X chance of getting Karn, not great, not great. So the majority of the value of any box opening comes down to the rares and uncommons. And we have a doozy because there is an uncommon here worth more than the majority of rares. Uh, the most expensive rare is Sanlei, Voice of Plenty. This card is quite amazing. It has a big body, it has interesting abilities, and at the end of the day, it's just good. It gives everyone hex proof, and it makes stuff bigger. And Limited, I played against this at pre-release. I couldn't beat it. It's very difficult to beat in the right colors. Next, uh, Steel Leaf Champion. Wow, like when I, Legends came out, there was a car, card called Elven Riders. Uh, it was free double green uh, for a free free, and you could not, the opponent could not block it unless they could block it with a flyer. That was considered like the apex of green creatures with, re, uh, with uh, evasion, because green creatures were not supposed to have evasion other than trample. So this creature came out, it turned around my play group everyone started playing it now of course you could lightning bolt it back in the day but that was you could always lightning bolt's just a good card removal was just good right here i look at this card and i say to myself wow we've really gone we really pushed the creature power level has been pushed to insane levels while the spell sorceries and stuff have been kind of Diminished. Obviously, we don't have the Ancestral Recall level or the even Lightning Bolt is often not in standard. But here, we have something that is fantastically powerful. It, if your opponent is kind of daddling around, you're going to finish them very fast. Number three was surprising, but it was Sofer Falls. One of my biggest pet peeves about a set like this is if the lands are not inherently playable in modern. So now, Sofa Falls was playable in the Splinter Twin deck as a extra type of dual land, but it wasn't as good obviously as the Fetch Lands or Shock Lands, or even in the Splinter Twin deck before the banning, the Filter Lands. So I would not buy into this stuff because it's just going to get reprinted. I am a little, the set looks amazing, but I believe they could have chose better lands. You know, uh, having lands, having five valuable lands in the set can take Karn to Tarkir and make it internally valuable forever. Not having those five lands in the set, then you get Dragon Maze or you get uh, what's Karn to Tarkir, Dragons of Tarkir. It comes down a lot of the value post rotation after rotation hits will be determined by these five lands. And they're not, in my opinion, the most valuable. All right, so here's the card I really want to talk about it's a $44 foil, a $4 regular card. And as a foil, you're going to want more of them. You're going to want a bunch of these cards. I'll make it pretty simple. It is very, very good. Um, it is something that should drop in price because it's not uncommon and it's not fatal push good, right? But it's very, it's important that a set for expected value has an uncommon that is worth more than a pack. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, it really increases the expected value. If you open a box, you're going to get two to four of these. That's very good. That's like additional bonus money if you think about it. So I like this card. I think they should do that for more. Uh, they should 
do that in more sets, like have a Fatal Push S card or a Dampening Spear or something like that, because it really makes buying a pack. So it doesn't make the whole pack dependent on the Mythic or the Rare. You could still break even, which is always a great feeling. Like it's a good feeling to break even on a pack on the Uncommon. And that's what I like. I like that a lot. Um, I like that for mod Modern Master sets. I like it for this set. I like it for core sets, especially. All right, so now let's talk about my pick. Uh, it's gone down a little bit from the $5 or the $4.50 or something like that. I think overall, it is the foil multiplier is quite high on this card, which tells me that people are mainly interested in EDH. I like it because it comes into play untapped. And there are so many times when I was playing Torment, uh, Cabal Coffers, I know, I say Cable, Cabal Coffers, and you need that extra land, and the Cabal Coffers won't give it to you because it comes in play. Ta and essentially, if you draw in your opening hand, it's a dead card until much later in the game. I understand this is not as powerful, I understand it is not as good. But we're talking about one of these strong, when you compare it to something, it doesn't need to compare one to one, not, especially not in standard. It has a lot of things I like about it. Um, it's a land, it produces more mana, uh, it can produce quite a bit, and it comes in play untapped. All very good things on the card. Okay, and then we roll out with I think this is number five or six, G Gilded Lotus. I want to say Glided, but Gilded Lotus. This card is going to hit $2. And once it hits $2, guys, buy, 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 buy. There's some reprints. So reprints are a known entity, right? I look at it and I say, hmm, okay, this card used to be $8. And I know that it will eventually, barring another reprint, uh, be $8 again. There's no doubt in my mind that should this card not be reprinted in two to three years, it hits $10, eight to $10, no problem. Now, once it hits $2, that's when you wanna buy. You don't wanna buy right now. Supply is extremely low, demand is extremely high. This is the exact opposite of the time that you wanna buy. You probably wanna buy during rotation or when people stop using. I, re I very much doubt people are gonna use this in standard. Uh, five is a lot. And by the time you have five, like what can you really not play? It does mana accelerate you like crazy, but you're already at five, right? Like what else do you really need? All right, uh, tracks this. So we're moving to the, the realm of if you open this, you break even, but anything worse than these eight cards, you're not gonna break even. These are your break even points, right? These are the things that you're more likely to see than a random Karn Mythic, right? I never wanna base whether or not I wanna buy a pack to open based on the Mythics. I don't, or to quote masterpieces. These things are not likely. I like to base it on these. So if you really want to buy a box to open or you wanna know what the good price point of the box is, you look at these cards. Traxxas is very good. I like the fact that he's legendary. I like the fact that he's unique. And it's got pretty cool artwork, it's a big body. I like him a lot. Um, I don't know why I like him, because I think he reminds me of the Odin days, like Colossus of Sardinia and all these cards that, used to, that you had to do certain things to untap them. Leviathan, that blue card from Ice Age. I think, was that Leviathan? Like 11, no, Polar Kraken. This reminds me of a simpler age where you play these large creatures and then you had to do some stuff to actually use them. Otherwise, your opponent will just run you over. All right, the last card which you kind of break even on is the Temporal Gate. Legendary Artifact. Oh, small side, everything in this set is legendary. It's possible that you open a pack because even the uncommons can be legendary. And it's more legendary than not. I mean, that's pretty incredible, right? That's pretty awesome. But anyway, back to the gateway. Uh, four, you may put a historical permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. This type of stuff, the Elvis Piper slash the... There's one quick silver amulet 
and then there's another one, Belps Portal. These things are always semi-valuable, so it's also a clear buy if it's under $2, because it should never be. Uh, the problem is they do get reprinted a lot, because people want to, you know, Quicksilver Amulet. I think it was reprinted in a core set, and then maybe in Commander deck. But, nonetheless, they always have value. These are like guarantees. I can guarantee you that Gilded Lotus will, barring reprints, be an $8 to $10 card. I can guarantee you this will be a barring reprint, a $8 to $10 card in a few years from now. Because it's the cards that are very like it, and the cards that are reprinted, they already have established price histories, and they always go back maybe slightly lower than where they used to be, but they always kind of go back. You look at doubling season, right? That's a prime example of a card that was reprinted, plummeted in price, and then spiked up even harder the next time until the next reprint, which should be relatively soon, I guess. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.